Hi everyone, welcome to Chemolution. Today we will discuss Hyderabad University PhD Chemistry Entrance Exam 2020 questions and solutions. So, moving towards now, what was the pattern of the exam? So, this year the total marks was 70, and uh, there were two sessions part A and part B. Uh, part A contains 20 questions and it was need to all need to be attended and in part b there were 60 questions out of which only 20 questions was need to be attended attended then uh, each uh, correct answer which will carry 0.175 marks and incorrect questions carries minus 0.5 marks uh, there were no general aptitude questions or any mathematical type questions that, that are asked in gate exam or CS and net exam there are only chemistry subject questions and the cutoff for this year for general category was only 50 percent where if you score uh, 35 above now uh, you will qualify uh, and you will call for the you will be called for the interview so uh, this year there was a slight change in the pattern because previous year the marks total marks uh, used to be 80 in uh, 2009 before 2020 it was to total marks used to be 80 but this year they were the paper the total mark of the paper was 70 so moving the, in this video i will discuss uh, the part a questions five questions from part a and then more uh, subsequently i will upload uh, more questions and solution in the further days. so let's start sorry uh, the first question that was asked uh, is for coordination chemistry so you can see it is asked uh, asked that uh, the correct order for energy of the d orbitals in trigonal prism geometry so it is about asking about what is the energy of the d orbitals in trigonal prism geometry so for this you have to remember the order of the splitting uh, for the uh, for the uh, trigonal prism geometry then only you can answer so you will say how to remember because there are many complex uh, geometry for like example square uh, square planar trigonal pi bundle diagonal prism square pyramid it is most important question and generally asked in many exams so the trick is that you if you you know in square planar the order of the inner splitting d orbital splitting is first is d square minus d s square minus y square then d x y then d z square is greater than dxz is equal to dyz so for d trigonal pi by pyramidal just bring this dz square to the front and the rest remain the same only the slight change is that dz square is greater than ds square minus y square is equal to here it is a equal sign uh, dsy that is greater than dxz is equal to dyz similarly for a trigonal prism which was asked in the question you can see uh, for trigonal prism, just bring the last term uh, to the front, then it will be dsg is equal to y dyz. This greater than dz square, greater than ds y is equal to ds square minus y square. And for square perimeter, it is uh, this uh, the trick I said. It does not uh, require, doesn't matches with the square perimeter. It is just a little different. Uh, the order is that here it is d s square minus y square is greater than d z square then d uh, greater than d s square that is greater than d x z is equal to d y z and this splitting is just similar to the uh, tetragonal elongation I have written uh, you know we have uh, study about j t d giant dollar distor sorry uh, giant dollar distortion so in that uh, um, in that uh, we know there are two types that is tetragonal uh, elongation and another is compression and another is compression uh, so uh, for that uh, the you know that the, the similar the orbital the orbital splitting and tetragonal elongation is just similar just exactly this uh, like this so the it is same as the d orbital splitting in the square pyramidal geometry so just remember the trick for this uh, only you remember the square planar uh, splitting and then you can uh, uh, remember uh, remember the trigonal pi pyramidal and trigonal 
So these three are important and they are just interlink. Just bring those that I marked that they just square to the front. You will get the triangular bipyramid and just change this that here there is an equal sign. Just remember that and similarly for triangular prism, uh, just bring the last term to the front and just remain the same. So this was the first question from coordination chemistry. Then second come to, come to the second question. Now it, it all again from coordination chemistry. It was from reaction mechanism. So the, here it is asked that a similar rate constant for the displacement of Cl minus by H2O in complexes PtCl42 minus PtCl3 NS3 minus PtCl2 NS3 whole 2 and PtCl NS3 whole 3 whole uh, plus indicates that. So it is uh, saying that when we if we want to displace uh, Cl minus as all these complexes are containing Cl now common so if you want to replace this Cl by H2O then a, a similar rate constant is observed it is due to why why the rate constant is similar so we know that those those complexes PtCl42- PtCl3 NS3- PtCl2 NS3 whole 2 and PtCl NS3 whole 3, uh, whole 3 all are square panel complexes so and we know that square panel complexes source associative mechanism that is SN2 mechanism because the, the there are four uh, this is square panel complexes so there is vacancy uh, around this uh, vacant uh, vacancy around this or there is no much steric index so it can accept accept one uh, new ligand into it so that's why it is it is said to be associative whereas for generally in uh, octahedral complexes since there are so many ligands around the metal atom and there is so much steric hindrance that it cannot accept new ligand so it first has to undergo dissociation that is SN1 mechanism that's why uh, here but they but all these complexes are square panel complexes so they can show associative mechanism and hence that is known as SN2 and we know that in the associative mechanism the rate determining step involves the addition of ligand to the complex instead of dissociation of ligands Hence, the rate constant remains same for all those complexes. We know that in SN2, the first step, that is the rate determining step, it involves the addition of the external ligand, that is the H2O. But in SN1, first the dissociation takes place. So then, if if they have been taken place by SN1, then the rate will have been different because all those complex contains different ligands, and those ligands may dissociate at a different rate. Then the rate constant will have been different. But since it is square planar complexes and this first they undergo association so all the uh, rate constant is independent of the nature of the ligands contained in the complex hence so we can say that from this it, we can say that the answer is a that is the re reaction is associative okay so the answer is the reaction is associate associative then moving to the next question and that is Okay, uh, it is asked, it is for question form in organic spectroscopy. Uh, the 31 p NMR spectrum of P4S3 and is given the spin of 31 p phosphorus that is equal to half. Now, P4S3, this question is many, many asked in many entrance exams. Now, if we know the structure of P4S3, we can e easily uh, deduce the NMR spectra. So, the P4S3 structure is just like this. And if we see the structure, we can see that there are two types of phosphorus. One, this is this P. This uh, this is one one P, which has a different M moment, and this three P are in different M moment. So I have marked it one P A. This is one, and this three P B is another different. Uh, another environment. So we will observe uh, number of P in N thirty one P NMR is equal to two. Okay. Uh, for now for pa we know that the splitting formula is given by 2ni plus 1 now for this pa now the neighboring phosphor uh, num number of equivalent equal uh, nuclei in the neighboring are this 3p 1 2 3 the 3 p are in the neighbor of this pa so if I, we know that here n is equal number of nuclei so 2 into 3 into i is equal to half plus 1 and we get 4 and 4 means quadrate so for PA the splitting pattern will be quadrate and for PB the splitting is equal to this for 3PB 
the, the there is only one pa in the in the neighboring side so it will be 2 into 1 into half plus 1 it will be 2 which is which is doublet so now the, what is the it is asking uh, intensity also ratio the intensity ratio will be since there are 3 pb and 1 pa so 3 pb is to 1 pa is equal to 3 is to 1 so the answer will be a that is there will be two set of p as i said for pa 1p and for 3b 1p one will be a doublet that is for uh, 3pb there will be a doublet and for pa there will be a quartet and the intensity ratio will be that is for 3pb the intensity ratio is th since for 3 for spruce we are considered so the intensity ratio will be 3 is to 1 that is it is in the ratio it is in the ratio pb is to pa that's why it is 3 is to 1 3 is to 1 okay so this is one question from yeah, in organic spectroscopy and answer will be a and then next question it is from MOSFET spectroscopy uh, so it is given that if the source 57 cobalt of 57 iron is moving at a speed of 2 millimeter per second then the frequency shift is and the standard value are given gamma ray frequency is given and the velocity is given that is the standard speed of light 3 into 10 to the 8 meter per second so it is asking what will the frequency shift now in the MOSFET spectroscopy we know that there is a formula for the frequency shift which is known as delta nu is equal to nu v by c what where delta nu is the frequency shift nu is the frequency of the gamma ray where it is given that is equal to 3.5 into 10 to 18 hertz that is the frequency of gamma ray v is the velocity of the source which is given 2 millimeter per second and we have to convert it into meter so it is 2 into 10 to the minus 3 meter per second and c is the speed of the light so putting all this value in the formula we will get the frequency set of the delta nu is equal to since we when we keep put all those value then delta frequency set will be equal to 23.3 it came out 23.3 10 to 6 hertz and since the answers are given in megahertz so we convert it into 23.3 megahertz so answer will be a so this is the direct formula based uh, formula uh, based question so if you know the formula when then only we can answer this uh, question otherwise it is not possible so, so again uh, there were two tire yeah, spectroscopy question came this year from part A. One was from inorganic NMR spectroscopy in inorganic spectroscopy, and another is MOSFET spectroscopy. And the last question will be from the last question will is from group theory, and it is quite simple. Uh, it is asking about the characters of the irreducible presentation of the C2H point group are given. The correct Fulican symbols for the tau t and tau three. So you can here the C2H character table is given and it is telling that what will be the characters of tau 2 and tau 3. So if we say, I have written it here. So for tau t the characters for Ea is equal to 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 and for tau 3 is 1 1 minus 1 minus 1. So in group 3 we know there are certain rules which we have to remember from that only we can deduce the uh, the the Mulligan symbols for those irreducible representation otherwise we will not we cannot so it is we can see that for, for if we consider first the tau 2 uh, it is in the we we can see that the, uh, the character of e is equal to 1 1 means we, it can be other a or b if it if it is have been uh, character of e is equal to 2 then it will be e the Mulligan symbol will be e and if it is 3 the Moroccan symbol will be T. Okay, so since uh, here the character of E is 1, so it can be either A or it can be B. Now, second of second, we will see uh, the C2 character. Here it is written that it is minus 1. Since it is given minus 1, then it is anti symmetric. Symmet there are two types that is, one is symmetric, symmetric, and another is anti symmetric. So if it is symmetric, uh, it will be given as plus 1 and if it is anti-symmetric, it will be minus 1. So if it is anti-symmetric, it is minus 1 and minus 1 and since it will be B. Why B? Because A or it can be A or B. Now since it is 
एंटी सीमेट्रिक विद रेस्पेक्ट टू सी टू सो इट विल बी इफ इफ इट हैव बीन सीमेट्रिक विद सी टू दैट इज इट इफ इट विल बी प्लस वन देन इट हैव बीन ए सिंस यर इट इज माइनस वन सो इट इज बी नो सेकेंड थर्ड विल बी वी विल सी द कैरेक्टर ऑफ आई आई इज द इनवर्सन सेंटर एंड सिंस द इनवर्स इट इज सीमेट्रिक मीन इट हेल्थ द प्लस साइन इज देर सो इट इज सीमेट्रिक विद रेस्पेक्ट टू आई सो यू विल गिव बी जी जे मीन्स गैरेट इफ इट हैव बीन माइनस वन देन इट हैव बीन अनजेरेट सो द मोलिकन सिम्बल फॉर टॉ टू विल बी बी जी सो फ्रॉम द ऑप्शन यू कैन सी इट कैन बी अदर सी और डी सो वी हैव टू चूज बिटवीन सी एंड डी सो नाउ वी हैव टू कंसिडर फॉर टॉ थ्री द मोलिकन सिम्बल फॉर टॉ थ्री वी हैव टू डिसाइड सो नाउ फॉर टॉ थ्री यू कैन सी द कैरेक्टर ऑफ ई इज वन सो नाउ अगेन इट कैन बी अदर ए और बी सेकेंड इज फॉर सी टू हियर इट सी टू द डायमेंशन इज प्लस वन इट इज इट इज प्लस वन सो हियर इट विल बी बी नॉट ए सॉरी इट विल बी ए नॉट बी बिकॉज इट इज सीमेट्रिक इफ इट हेज बीन एंटी सीमेट्रिक दैन एज वी सीन इन प्रीवियस इट वॉज इट वॉज बी बट सीन इट इज प्लस वन सो इट विल बी ए देन थर्ड ऑप्शन इज इट इज फॉर इफ यू सी द डायमेंशन ऑफ आई इट इज गिवन माइनस वन माइनस वन मीन्स एंटी सीमेट्रिक सो हेन्स इट विल बी ए यू दैट इज अनजेरेट सो जी मीन्स एम गेरेट एंड यू मीन्स यू मीन्स अनगेरेट सो सीन इट इज माइनस वन सो विल राइट ए यू सो द मोलिकन सिम्बल फॉर टॉ थ्री विल बी ए यू हेन्स द आंसर सिंस हियर सी डब्ल्यू आई हैव रिटर्न वो डब्ल्यू आर टी वॉट इज डब्ल्यू आर टी इट इज जस्ट अ शॉर्ट फॉर्म टू राइट विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू सो फॉर योर अंडरस्टैंडिंग आई हैव रिटर्न इट आउट सो द मोलिकन सिम्बल फॉर टॉ थ्री विल बी ए यू सो द आंसर विल बी यूज रिटर्न फॉर टॉ टू इट विल बी बी जी एंड फॉर टॉ थ्री इट विल बी ए यू एंड द आंसर विल बी डी सो दिस वॉज ऑल अबाउट दिस फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द सॉल्विंग क्वेश्चन आई हैव टेकन डाउन फाइव क्वेश्चन सो होप यू अंडरस्टैंड अंडरस्टैंड ऑल एंड यू कैन गेट अ आइडिया अबाउट वॉट टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन आर आस्ट इन दिस एंट्रेंस एग्जाम इज इज एंड इफ आई से द सिलेबस will be generally for matches with the csi net or gate type questions come and if you practice csi net or gate type question you can easily crack uh, this phd and in some of hyderabad university so for again in further videos we will solve uh, many other questions that are present and that are there so hope you all like it